how to add dimensional lumber to an end scale lumber shed and go from this to this. A fellow club member asked me to populate the lumber bins in his end scale lumber shed and that he would provide the material. Not a problem. As you can see, he provided me with a box of end scale lumber barrels and whatnot. So in the box, this is a conglomeration of different sizes of lumber, different colors. But another problem is the lumber is divided with the dividers between the layers and not looking like banded lumber. Some of the pieces are tan, some are wood color, but still plasticky looking. And I did try Tester's Delicoat, but still the color wasn't natural. The pieces that were tan were more fleshy colored than a natural wood color. So I came up with a better idea and what better solution for wood than natural wood. My first thought was what could be more perfect than to use scale lumber and cut it to length and glue it together. Then I decided no I didn't want to have to cut a gazillion pieces and glue them and try to get them all straight and uh, that was not a viable option. So I came up with this idea. So with the trip to the local hobby shop, or in my case, local hobby lobby, I got three different sizes of basswood, not balsa wood, but the basswood. All of these are 24 inch strips. Uh, this is one eighth by one quarter. This is one quarter by three eighths, and then three sixteenths by three eighths. So with an end scale ruler, uh, measuring the length of the bins, comes up to about 20 foot. That was a nice round number, it worked for me. So I decided to make my pieces 20 feet long to, to fill the bins. So I set my miter box to an end scale 20 feet, and that's the inside dimensions from the cut line to the stop. Drop in your first lumber strip, line up your saw, and just repeat those cuts. until it's free and repeat after your lumber's been cut uh, you may have a little burr uh, that's not a, a good clean cut uh, that we want to show in our you need to put it to the rear but if you have two cuts you may have that on both ends so one of them you have to get rid of and the way I did that is I just took it and just kind of rolled where I'm kind of lateral and then I just kind of straightened it up as I got to the let's just do this let's go here and just and just repeated that and that gets rid of the, the and that'll give us a nice flush in so once you have all your lumber cuts made. Now it's just a matter of dimensioning it to the different size of lumber. And all I did was use a, a sharp colored pencil and just draw a line and just keep working your way across. And since this is end scale, we're just having to give the illusion that it's separate boards. These are going to be some fairly wide boards. Then, for the ends, just continue that line on down across. And then, however, whatever dimension you want, for the depth of the board. And if you want to draw bands, where it's banded. And make these kind of heavy. And then repeat down the side. and repeat for each of the bins that you have. And you can vary the widths of the board and the depths of the board uh, 
uh, the, and that the length of course will be the same, but the width and the depth uh, can vary uh, to give you some variable different dimensional lumber loads. Uh, I only draw these lines on the ends that are going to be exposed. There's no need in drawing that on the, this going to be to the rear. And I just drew these side shadow lines on the visible side. If this is going to be against the wall, there's no need in drawing lines over there on that side. In the event that you get your lines and you don't like the way they turned out, you can give yourself a second chance. Uh, instead of erasing, you just file it down to where those lines disappear. And just file it a little bit, give it a quick close inspection. And if they're not going away, just do it some more. And you can start over once you get a, a, a all filed away like you want. And just to kind of break up the uniformity of all these bundled lumbers, I just came back and added some smaller strip wood pieces to add some variety. Uh, and I'll show you how I did that. Using the strip wood, we just measured 20 scale feet, cut it to length. And if you need pieces smaller than what you already have on hand, you can just take what you already have and cut that in two. Draw visible shadow lines on the ends and sides that are visible. Uh, sides that are going to be against an edge or a wall that aren't visible. There's no need in knocking yourself out drawing lines for that that won't be seen. And all of the ends get drawn shadow lines with the sharp colored pencil. I did not draw shadow lines on the side of this because it's on the upper deck and once you put the roof on there you can't see it. My adhesive of choice is the Turbo Tacky Glue which I used for this project and this can be found at your local Hobby Lobby. And just take your glue of choice and spread just a tiny bit on the bottom edge of your lumber strip. Just a thin, thin layer is all we need. It's not under stress, it's just to hold it in place. And get it positioned where you want it to go. A little light pressure and stick in place. And you're done. And just a close inspection for the camera, see that you can see. Try to give it a little roll here. And you can see with the roof removed, uh, you can see how our lumber's stacked in there. And the scale strip wood added just for some dimension. Just give it a nice open look and the appearance of scale lumber. And this is shed number two after it's all done that you saw me do the uh, lumber two with the sign on the top, finished weathering, uh, put some struts to hold the sign. You can see uh, inside now the uh, lumber and it just really gives a nice real full effect. And this is the other lumber shed that I worked on and I've got some double stacks in here and plus I've put some lumber on the deck and some leaning lumber. Uh, some of the weathering has been done on this one as well and repeat looking on the inside how it's all stacked.